What I want to talk about in this video are empiric victories. Sometimes some called empiric victories. Those are victories that cancel themselves out. I've spoken about that before, often. It comes down to this. There are times we get upset and we want a change in a situation. And I'm not saying you're not right, that something needs to change. Maybe you're upset for the right reasons, and you should be upset. But too often we only look at the relief we want, and we don't look at how that relief is going to impact us in the long run. Let me give an ancient example. You have the kingdom of Epirus, it was a small Greek kingdom. Well, small. The region today called Albania, that was the ancient kingdom of Epirus, was the Greek kingdom. And then you had the Roman Republic, that at this time contained big portions of Gaul, Gaul which today called France. It contained Italy, and also parts of what today called Spain. So when the Roman military made advances against the king of Epirus, the king of Epirus sent his army against Rome. That's to be expected. If someone wants to invade your country, of course you're going to defend yourself militarily. So he was successful. He kept sending his army, and every time the Roman troops arrived, they defeated them. But here's the trap. By, by resisting so violently, most of the young men that were able to defend the country died. So after a while, his arm, his military was depleted. The war also cost a lot of money, so financially and economically, Epirus collapsed. And this also led to social unrest. So after a while, after Epirus collapsed, they became an insignificant district within the Roman Republic. If they played it well, Epirus could have become a client kingdom under the Roman Senate. In that case, they would have retained their autonomy and much of their financial and economic independence. Just like the kingdom of Thracia did, and many, some other kingdoms. But because they didn't look at the bigger picture, they lost everything. Now, I know that the rulers of the world back then already were colonists. So the king of Epirus, as well as the Roman Senate, they had this planned out. Those elites all worshipped Apollo. They were, just, they were one big Greek cult. But the people, the society, thought it was real. But that war itself was a hoax. It was the action-reaction solution. Action, Rome makes it military advances against Epirus. Reaction, the people don't want it, so the king and both the people fight against them. Consequence, Epirus collapsed. And nobody wants to live in, in, a, in a chaotic in society because things don't work. So the solution, they become a district of Rome. And it being a district of Rome was, that was the outcome that both the elite of Epirus as well as the elite of the Roman Republic both wanted. But from the perspective of the people, it was a dumb decision to support this, this militant activism against Rome. Because remember, Rome at that time already had most of the Western Mediterranean, and Epirus was a small kingdom in the east of Mediterranean. So they needed trade in the Mediterranean to survive economically. So it wasn't wise to deal with Rome in such a way. But okay, that's an ancient example. Let me give a modern example. You have this, uh, let me say, classmate during high school. And you consider him annoying because he's, because he laughs all the time. And more people consider him annoying. And now you all just want him to F off. You want to be left alone. Now you develop hatred against the guy. You are fed up with the guy. What's going on? You're now in the negative and you're now developing bitterness. 
So after a while, the guy changed to another school. So you think, oh, it's over. No, it's not over. You have bitterness now. You have heaviness in you. And sooner or later, someone's going to trigger that bitterness. And the bitterness is going to come up in a very ugly manner. And then you need to face yourself. Now you need to deal with the damage in, an, in that situation. And you need to re realize now that you cast it on yourself because you developed bitterness. You developed a will against someone else. But if you would have looked at the bigger picture, you would realize, hold on a minute. Having this will against this plot may not going to be worth it in the long run. I'll better learn how to deal with folks instead of keep seeking relief all the time. Christ said it this way, you need to count the cost. He talked about if you want to build a military tower, you're going to check your finance to see if you can finance the project, or else you would be game with the project and you can't finish it, you can't complete it. And when you can't complete it, the people around will begin to mock you, saying he, start, he began something that he can't finish. Or if you wanna, or if you wanna fight a war against your uh, against someone militarily, you're going to check whether you can use ten thousand to defeat twenty thousand. Or else you would begin with that deck, and halfway you would have to send a messenger asking for peace. And Christ said that in a cost of deny yourself, pick up your cross, and follow me. Now. What Christ said there, deny yourself, pick up your cross, and follow me, it has been abused and misused a lot in pagan Christianity. What Christ simply meant was, if you follow me, you will face backlash by this world. So be prepared. And the only way you can be prepared is if you align yourself completely with Christ, so you can so you will walk in the power of his Holy Spirit, and that's how you will overcome. All that will come against you. No weapon from the cancer shall prosper. That's true. And Christ said, You will tremble upon scorpions and serpents and upon, and upon the whole camp of the enemy, and nothing shall by no means harm you. Christ said that. But those promises are only active and in practice when you are completely aligned with Christ. Or better said, when you walk by faith. Okay? That's what Christ meant by denying yourself, pick up your cross, and follow me. The cross was a symbol of sexual humiliation that the Greeks used on their political enemies. And what Christ made plain was, you will have a cross to carry. He said that. That's why he said deny yourself. What he meant to deny yourself is, you need to surrender yourself completely to his guidance and his protection. But the cross is only temporarily. He said, in the world you shall have tribulation, but with good cheer I have come the world. He did not mean that you just have to put up with tribulation your whole life long. No, there is victory in the here and now, because he promised that you will turn from scorpions and serpents, and you will have power of the whole camp of the enemy, and none shall by no means harm you. And in the Old Testament, so already promised that no weapon from the you shall prosper. But in order to operate in that overcoming power, you need to forfeit your own way of doing things. You need to forfeit your own understanding and be loyal to his understanding. Because the power is in his understanding, not in your interpretation of it. So, that's what I want to say for now. Keep agreeing with Christ and be at peace.